Hi everyone, my name is Tegan and welcome back to Sandy Rights. Today we're going to be talking about here, here it is, Loveless, which I believe is one of the most anticipated asexual books of ever. <laughs> I personally cannot name many, if any. But that book was also one of my most highly anticipated reads of 2020, I believe it came out. It might have been 2019, I think it's 2020. But it's taken me so long to do this review. I read this in December 2020. It's now April 2021. It took me so long to write this review because it's taken me months to process and to put into words how much of a personal attack every single page of that book was. It's everything I've needed in a book and more, everything I've wanted since I was probably about 13 hearing about asexuality for the first time. This is my second of her books. I have Loveless here. I've also read the short story Nick and Charlie that goes not with this but is related to Solitaire. Yeah, I read that soon after it came out. It was a prize for a Mabella's writing competition. And I do think that Alice has the potential to become one of my favourite authors. And I unfortunately have not had the opportunity to read any other of her books yet. But it has been wonderful to see how much she's grown from this to this. And the improvements are incredible. So, my first love about this book was the most noticeable off the bat, and it is the setting. As a Brit, I've always been drawn to books that are set in Britain. And have always been filled with like, this slight disappointment that so many of them are focused around London especially those written by non-British authors. The Americans tend to write a lot about London, the Brits sometimes have a little more diversity, but it's usually southeast, you know? So yeah, this one isn't set in the southeast, and um, it's set in the northeast actually, in university, and it's very refreshing to read about a first year university experience, especially a British one, because I've read a lot about American colleges. And this whole like first time being an adult experience and feeling and that reflected my life completely last year and now my second year of uni this book paralleled so many different aspects of my life. The descriptions in it felt so accurate and real and similar to my own experience even though it's set in the northeast not the southwest where I'm from and go to university. My second love are the characters. Um, Georgia is our arrow ace protagonist. She's shy and introverted and going through an identity crisis and she sets off to uni in search of love and ends up with so much more. Her friends are messy and lonely and they make bad decisions and soliloquies in like true drama student fashion. And there's loads of self-doubt and self-loathing as they navigate their new adult experiences and figure out their identities. And there's also a huge focus on friendships rather than romantic relationships. And that's not just the asexual thing, that's just a found family university thing. My third and most important love is the own voices, I, I believe it's own voices, the aromantic asexual representation. I love how this book emphasises that there's no specific way of being asexual or aromantic. It mostly focuses on George's experience, so it won't be the perfect representation for every arrow but it did feel so so similar to my own experience. It felt like Alice had just like opened up my Twitter and my Tumblr and my notes app and just stole directly from my pages. <laughs> and I love how it included other asexual characters and brushed in their experience to expand on this spectrum, but it was very focused on George's experience. And this book went into so much detail about both romantic and platonic love. And there's a quote that hit me hard about giving your friendships the same magic you'd give a romance because friendships are just important and especially for asexuals friendships are sometimes more important than romance. And this is a bit where in my original review I wrote that there was a lot of diversity and representation that felt very authentic and didn't feel forced or like tokenism in my opinion. However since writing this view I've read other people's reviews and I think I picked up on a lot of things that I didn't necessarily notice in my own read through and these were like the one and two star reviews so I'm gonna put a little I'm gonna tell you about the representation and even though this isn't something that I noticed in my first read through 
it probably will be something I pick up the second time around and that will probably drop my rating. I rated it 5 stars, it's more of a 4.5 but if I take these things into consideration it drops it lower. I think most people's first issues is that they believed George's sexual experience made out to be like the only asexual experience which I disagree with because there are other asexual characters and it does elaborate on this in the book. Now I'm too dark. So yeah, a lot of people felt that the representation was very narrow-minded, I believe. And a lot of people felt, this is something I did actually notice, that Georgia, she is, I believe, a sex-repulsed but sex-positive asexual, but she comes off as a bit slut shamey and very judgmental of other characters' sex lives. And then again, I think a lot of people wanted this to be the perfect asexual representation. <laughs> so yeah, there's a lot of faults in that. But personally, I I'm okay with those parts because it's representing one character, not an entire spectrum of sexuality. But again, I brush those things off because how almost identical this representation was my own experience, so I'm incredibly biased about that. However, the other representation, there is a pansexual character who a few people picked up that she's a stereotype of very negative pansexual representation because she uses sex as a coping mechanism. So she is slut shamed a lot. Yeah, a sex coping mechanism of past trauma, so she is that stereotype. There's also another asexual character who is non-binary and uses he, they pronouns, but is also, not also, he's only referred to as he, and even their friends refer to them as he the entire time. But they are only, they, not that they're only a side character, they are a side character, but it's adding this stigma about pronouns, as someone openly goes by he, they, but only gets referred to as their biological sex by their own friends. This character was, I believe, one of the only people of colour in the book. I believe they were Indian. So then again, a lot of people picked up that there's not much racial diversity in this book. And I come from, I believe, the whitest part of the UK and there is not a single person of colour on my university course. So that is not something I picked up the first time around because I am surrounded by white experience. The main controversies are the very narrow-minded and sex repulsed, even though it never actually says the word sex repulsed, asexual experience, the slut-shamed pansexual characters, and the non-binary and race representation. So yeah, as I said, although those are, those are not things that I picked up the first time around, I think they are important to include in this review, even though they're not my own thoughts, but there will be things that I pick up if I read this again. But I want to say that the main part of my original review was that this was so similar to my experience, it was a comfort blanket. And if I read a book like this, not 10 years ago, but at least 5 years ago, I would have been so much happier with myself, with lo a lot less self-loathing and self-doubt and just hating myself for being broken, you know? So yeah, I do believe this can be an important book for asexuals, especially little poor ones like me who were struggling coming to terms with my own identity and accepting my identity as something that wasn't abnormal. But again, you had the downsides of the other harmful representation. So yeah, I think that's all I had to say on Loveless. I'm trying to get back into doing reviews again. I was trying to focus on doing my, my favourite I'm going to do my top three books of every month and I realised I didn't really love three books every month and so I'm just doing um, any very good book I read and hoping it turns out. And I'm also hoping to do some other kind of video content that's not reviews for this channel because I used to do that a lot, I used to talk about writing a lot and I'm writing a lot right now and I love it. So yeah, that's what I want to talk about soon. So if you've read Loveless, please leave me a comment tell me what you think about it. If you also have other good asexual book representations, please let me know because I would love that. And thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you next time. Bye!